Warning, it is important that prior to performing this or any other safety or service procedure on any marathon product, that the person performing the work has both read and fully understands the parts and service manual, as well as the product operator's manual, including the detailed safety instructions that accompanied this product. If there's anything that is unclear or that you don't understand, do not attempt to operate the product or perform any of the service or maintenance tasks called out in this video. Quarantine the area, lock out and tag out the product, walk away and contact your supervisor immediately for clarification. It is also important to ensure you are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment, hereafter referred to as PPE, prior to beginning this or any other service or maintenance procedure. Hey, I'm Donald Tidmore, the Service Guru here at Marathon Equipment, and thanks for joining me at the Service Shack. On behalf of everyone here at Marathon Equipment, we'd like to thank you for purchasing our products. And today, we'd like to show you how to perform preventative maintenance on your stationary and self-contained augers. Before we begin, ensure that you have the proper PPE required by your facility. At a minimum, we suggest safety glasses, gloves, safety shoes, and earplugs if the unit is in a noisy environment. But always follow your company's PPE guidelines. Warning: Never enter any part of the auger until the unit has been locked out and tagged out. The following is our recommended preventative maintenance that should be performed every month. Step 1. Check for and correct any unsafe conditions in or around the auger area. Step 2. Clean debris from under and around the auger and its container. Step 3. Inspect the anchor bolts on the machine's foot pads for damage or if they have become unfastened. Please contact the machine installer if either of these conditions is observed so that they may be corrected. Step 4. Inspect the ratchet and the ratchet claws for function, wear, or damage. Step 5. Check the external cords and flexible conduit for chafing, rubbing, deterioration, or damage. Repair or replace as necessary. Step 6. Check that all the control functions, stop button, timers, lights, auto lube, etc. are operational. You must be trained to operate the machine to verify they are working correctly. Refer to the user's manual for complete instructions. Step 7. Check on and around gearboxes for leaks. Next. Check the oil and oil level in the planetary gearbox. The oil should be translucent and the proper level should be at the bottom of the sight gauge. If not, change the oil as needed. If an oil change is necessary, place a catch pan under the gearbox and remove the bottom plug using a hex wrench. Once the oil is drained, replace the plug and fill it with oil. Step 8. Check the auger screw and front hub cover for material buildup, banding, plastic wrap, etc. Check the front hub cover for grease leakage. Visually inspect below front bearing cover for grease leakage. Step 9. Check the auger screw for damage and repair it if it's necessary. Step 10. Check the grease reservoir level. If the level is less than one quarter filled, fill the reservoir until it's full. The following is our recommended preventative maintenance that should be completed every quarter. Step 1. Remove the cover with an impact drill and a 9 16 socket. Then clean debris from the chain or the sprocket chamber. Step 2. Inspect the rear bearing cover for grease leakage. Perform a visual inspection of the shaft between the sprocket and rear bearing cover and the area directly behind the rear bearing cover for grease leakage. Step 3. Inspect the sprockets for excessive wear or damage. This can include, but is not limited to, Large amounts of material are missing from any of the teeth on the sprocket. Obvious signs of wear on the points of contact between the sprocket teeth and the roller chain. Step 4. Inspect the chain for excessive wear or damage. Use the appropriate chain wear indicator to check for chain elongation. Step 5. Check the chain for proper tension. The chain should have one to one and a half inches of deflection on the top side of the chain, halfway between the sprockets when finger pressure is applied to the chain. Step 6. Ensure the motor, the gearbox, or gearbox mounting plate bolts are tight. The motor to gearbox bolts should be torqued to 150 foot-pounds. The gearbox to back plate bolts should be tightened to 100 foot-pounds. Step 7. Check the main and small sprocket alignment. First, 
ensure the main sprocket and small sprocket are flush. To do this, measure from the rear wall to the edge of the tooth on the main sprocket. Then measure from the rear wall to the edge of the tooth on the small sprocket. If the dimensions are not the same, adjust the small sprocket to match the main sprocket. If you are adjusting the small sprocket on the ASC-210 or the AST-220, you will need to loosen the Allen head screw first. Then move the sprocket until it aligns with the main sprocket. When finished, apply blue Loctite to a new set of bolts and torque the Allen head set screw to 63 foot-pounds. If you are adjusting the small sprocket on the AST-320 or the AST-440, you must first loosen the bolts retaining the small sprocket to the sleeve. Then move the sprocket until it aligns with the main sprocket. When finished, apply blue Loctite to a new set of bolts and torque them to 60 foot-pounds. Step 8. Inspect and verify that the sprocket bolts or Allen hex screws are still at the proper torque. The large sprocket bolts should be torqued to 200 foot-pounds. The small sprocket bolts should be torqued to 60 foot-pounds. This only applies to the AST-320 and AST-440 models. The small sprocket set screw should be torqued to 63 foot-pounds. This only applies to the ASC-210 and the AST-220 models. Note, if any bolts are not at the proper torque, replace them using new bolts and ensure that they have blue Loctite applied to them before retorquing. Use an alternating tightening pattern to torque the bolts. If the set screw is not at the proper torque, please use an 8mm to torque to the specified value. Step 9. Inspect hard surface welding on the end of the auger flighting. For stationary augers, you must first separate the auger and the container. For self-contained augers, you will need to dump the compaction container. Then you will need to clean off the hard surface weld zone of the auger flights. Next, measure the height of the hard surface weld perpendicular to the auger flight. If the hard surface weld height is less than 1 8 of an inch, hard surface material needs to be reapplied. Step 10. Inspect the liners, if applicable. The liners for all models have an initial thickness of 3 8 of an inch. Step 11. Inspect the auger teeth, if applicable. Check to ensure that the units have all the teeth that are required. ASC 210 and AST 220 models should have four teeth. AST 320 models should have five teeth. AST 440 models should have five teeth per auger screw 10 total. Inspect the condition of the teeth. If the leading edge of the tooth is rounded off, replace the tooth. Step 12. Grease internal bearings. For units equipped with auto lube systems, fill the grease reservoir per the auto lube manufacturer's recommendation. The auto lube system will automatically grease the bearings. Depress the auto lube button until fresh grease emerges from the drip hose and clean the excess grease from the drip pan. For units not equipped with auto lube systems, clean the grease fitting. The fitting is located on the right hand side just above the gearbox. Add grease to the grease fitting until fresh grease emerges from the drip hose. Clean off the grease fitting. Clean out the excess grease from the drip pan. Then replace the gear cover using an impact drill and a 9 16 inch socket. Step 13. Grease the ratchets with the appropriate grease recommended in the auger manual. The following is our recommended preventative maintenance that should be completed annually. Step 1. Lubricate the electric motor bearings annually per the manufacturer's instructions. Step 2. Replace the gear oil in the planetary gearbox. Marathon recommends either Valvoline EPG Gear Lube 320 rated 15 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or Valvoline EPG Gear Lube 150 rated to negative 22 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. Now you know how to perform the necessary preventative maintenance on your Marathon augers. If you have any questions, please contact the Marathon Technical Services at 877-258-1105. Remember, we're here to help in any way we can. Be safe out there, and thanks for joining me at the Service Shack.